I have the great honor now to have a conversation with Mr. Martin Gauss, the CEO of Air Baltic. Thank you very much for having me, Mr. Gauss. You're welcome. So um, I hope you are fine, you and your family are well. Yes, we're all fine. And after uh, more than three months going through this, I think we are very positive because we see uh, flying already for four weeks now, we see that uh, the trust and uh, what we did well before the COVID crisis is coming back. We have more and more passengers, so very happy. You see, you see us in a very happy company because we are finally back in the air and fly. Air Baltic has been strongly in the media. There have been big, big plans and a, a very successful growth um, before COVID, uh, as it looked like. And now, like in every airline, it came to a halt and uh, slowly you are resuming actually more on the fast side earlier than others already but still how many aircraft do you have in operation as of today today we have 14 aircraft ready to fly we have 22 airbus a220 only so we have several things which happened after the crisis we took a decision to only focus on the airbus a220 300 we are the only airbus a220 operator because we have nothing else anymore what we operate we have 22 of them in total currently uh, much more on order uh, also more joining us this year uh, and next year uh, our average fleet age actually is a, a good number also uh, our average fleet age is 1.9 years so we have the probably the youngest fleet in the world on top of this you've been uh, the launch customer, if I'm right, for the A220-300, is that correct? The launch operator, they call it, that's launch correct. Launch operator. We have um, today 22 aircraft, as I said, mm. but we have firm order another 28 to come to take us to 50 aircraft. And we have 30 options uh, of the A220-300, which we would execute at a time when we believe, okay, we can fly more than 50 aircraft. So with that, we are amongst the biggest a a 220 uh, or holding the order book. Delta Airlines, of course, has a, a larger order book because they, they have a larger order, but otherwise, yes. And the launch operator status, we, after Swiss receiving the uh, A220-100 uh, launch, they were the launch customer for the aircraft. We then in December 2016 took our first aircraft uh, and since that time have had a lot of uh, international um, recognition for flying the aircraft and, and being a customer for Airbus, which uh, has shown that that aircraft is a game changer. So the air, a lot about Air Baltic is about the aircraft and now focusing only on that type for the future also shows our dedication to it. Obviously Airbus and also the other airplane manufacturers are now very busy receiving calls from the operators asking for postponements, cancellations of aircraft orders. And with that large pending order that you have with uh, Airbus from pre-COVID times, um, what is the change uh, to your business plan? What are your intentions with the uh, remaining orders that you have still? We took a decision when, so we were the first airline to stop flying completely on the 17th of March after the government took a decision that the borders will be closed. We decided that the airline will stop completely scheduled operations. With that, we were focusing for the future on staying because the most important thing was to stay. Uh, we needed to secure uh, future funds because it was clear that we would need uh, additional equity to go through the crisis. We also reduced our cost and we took a very important decision to revise our product. We've said we will bring forward a decision which we'd taken in the business plan for the future to focus only on Airbus A220-300. And that decision we took in that first week after being stopped by saying it doesn't make sense anymore to fly so many aircraft, so let us take out the Q400 fleet, 12 of them, and we take out the four Boeings, which were still there. They are parked here, but they will not go back to scheduled operations. So that was the biggest decision from the A220. Looking now at the order book for Airbus, it helps actually because a lot of airlines will try to postpone future deliveries, while we of course also need them in a different interval now, but we still want to have all of them to go back to the number of aircraft we had before. And as we are not flying the other types anymore, that helps us actually, and, and we are discussing currently with Airbus, how exactly to bring back um, all these aircraft we have ordered. So we don't want to cancel any of them, but we want to change the individual delivery dates. 
uh, for this year, we, we still intend to take three more aircraft in. Now we have um, a lot of uh, AF geeks amongst our viewers as well. And I'm uh, very glad that I'm obviously sitting in the airline CEO's office with the most airplane models in any CEO office. <laughs> right behind you, um, there's a table with uh, countless Air Baltic models. <laughs> and um, I, I think that either you're a very keen collector of these models or there might be some other story behind that possibly. No, actually, there is a story behind it. Um, the aircraft models, uh, it's 80 of them. It's the small HERPA models, uh, metal models. Uh, they are lined up there. And when we placed the order uh, for up to 80 aircraft, the idea was actually from uh, uh, our head of corporate communication, from Alice Bride. She had the idea to decorate the, at the press conference with these 80 little aircraft, the, the, the desk. And then they moved to my office uh, and... In my office, we took each time one was manufactured and flown over from Montreal to Riga. When it touches down here, <coughs> we physically put it from the left to the right. Uh, and then what you see on the right side, you see 22 aircraft, which is what we have today. On the other side, you see the ones to come. And uh, I have to say that not only you spotted this in this uh, office, it's probably the most photographed thing in Air Baltic because every journalist who in the past came asked for it and took interesting uh, uh, photos of it and it, it, this, this uh, board which uh, is behind me has been photographed and has been published a lot of times. Uh, it is not that I like to have airplane models, it's the opposite. I have only two other models, it's the aircraft which we fly here, the, the bigger models. But I like that it's a daily motivation, not only for me, for the management team, which is also having the meetings in this office. And we all are motivated by each of the aircraft coming uh, and then putting these little models. It, it, it gives you every day a visualization of what, where we want to go. We wish you all the very best of luck for this further mission to go. Thank you very much for your time and support here. And thank you for the opportunity that we could have that interview. Thanks. It took some two hours in that aircraft to fit all the cameras and that was actually yesterday evening and now it's early morning Riga I'm just crossing the bridge over the river here I'm basically alone no traffic and I just got my lifesaver my Circle K deluxe coffee in the morning heading off back to the airport for doing the photo flight to Dublin this morning with Captain Marina from our famous Q400 film and with Captain Gerhards from our Heraklion film and the delivery film from Montreal. So um, I would really like to find out how did they experience the lockdown, how did they experience the situation, how did it feel like. In the previous films they've been uh, really promoting their jobs as pilots, encouraging people to follow them. Uh, what is left? Is that still the case or how do they see the future for pilots? How do they see their own future in Air Baltic? Um, I want to find, find out more about that and I would like to invite you to join me. Cheers! So a very warm welcome to all of the Airclips fans uh, joining us today. Um, not the first time we've, uh, we've done um, one of the videos for Airclips. We're in our home, so to say, in the home of Air Baltic here in Riga in Latvia. And uh, we're just preparing for an early morning departure to Dublin. And um, my name is Gerhard Ramke. I'm chief pilot here at Air Baltic and um, have the pleasure to fly today with Marina. Um, yeah, hello everyone from my side also. Um, today will be a special flight from uh, Riga to Dublin. We're uh, going to have uh, two captains today on a flight deck. And um, on the right side, um, I'll be, um, uh, I'll have a chance to fly with a chief pilot. Well, 
the, the chance, how to say, we work together every now and then. The airline has become a little bit smaller. Um, we will tell you about that later on uh, during the flight. Um, and um, how to say, we're, we've always been like a, a big family. Now we're a slightly smaller family. Um, nevertheless, we enjoy uh, working together and meet each other um, every now and then. I have the pleasure to fly the right uh, seat with Marina today. Not that often that uh, we can um, have two captains flying together. So this is a nice opportunity as well. CS Lima for today. As you saw already, a beautiful aircraft for us. Um, I saw it stand 302 uh, right yeah. from Dubrovnik uh, yesterday. Um, on a flight to Dublin, I think you checked the papers already. So we have a tankering nicely. And um, for the weather, um, in Dublin might be rainy, but nothing special. A little bit turbulence uh, over the Sweden uh, forecasted, but we'll see mm -hmm. how it goes. Um, I didn't see anything special according to the NOTAMs um, for the fuel issue. So um, on the way back, I think I would take something around um, somewhere 7, 8, I would aim for. And uh, with this one on top, that would give us, uh, with a little bit extra on top of that, uh, with the taxi fuel, um, I would go for 1, 3, 2 around. Sounds good to me. Yeah. Yeah. And with that, weights are fine and so mm -hmm. on. We don't have any. So Any I'll issue there here. anywhere? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, seven eight both sides, a flight level three eight zero on the way uh, two, and uh, flight level two five zero initially on the way back. Then we climb three seven zero three nine zero. Uh, we'll check with the table. Yeah, and um, anything um, what I missed uh, for the flight? No, not really. Mm -hmm. The rest is discussed. The aircraft looks fine. Um, it's been, uh, how to say, overnight at home, so to say. Yep. It's been clean, disinfected. So, uh, no, everything clear. Okay, I think we should go and brief our cabin for them. Yeah, that's a good idea. Hello, Brit. Good morning. So, Good morning, everyone. Yeah, today Good we have morning, a little bit yeah. of a special flight. Um, two captains on the flight deck, and we have a little bit of a filming of our flight. Uh, we have a beautiful aircraft for today, uh, CS Lima. It's on stand 302, uh, came from Dubrovnik, Dubrovnik yesterday already. Um, so the flight times, uh, two hours uh, 40, we can make it both ways. Um, the weather in uh, Dublin is uh, might be a little bit rainy, otherwise no specials about that. Plus 14 degrees there, plus 12 degrees in Riga. Mm -hmm. There might be a little bit of a turbulence somewhere uh, over the Sweden or closer to um, Ireland. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it's okay. We still have a uh, enforced um, high altitude climb procedure, yes. so we call you uh, when you we are ready. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, so the question of the day. Yes, it's. Uh, Operation location precautions for crash eggs. Mm -hmm. So it's located in flight deck. Yes. On the it's left hand side. Perfect. Mm, so it must be there. The yeah, yeah only the in case of yeah, yeah. fire get behind the panels, <laughs> etc. Sure. And you would come in and let us know <laughs> what you what you need it for. Mm -hmm. And uh, mm -hmm. then we would most probably hand it to you. Yes. Yeah, good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, what about your uh, meals and drinks? Uh, still water for me, and we'll let you know about the meals yeah, when we have time. Water, no? Maybe two. Yeah. It's okay, yes. Same with me, please. Mm -hmm. Still water, and on the way too would be just perfect. Thank you. Mm -hmm. As uh, we are going through airport, you will need a mask as well? Um, I have one. I have mine That's with me. That's a good me. one, yeah. I yeah. can yeah. take yeah. that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Good. So, uh, passport control. Passport control. yes, we have to run through the passport mm -hmm. check, mm -hmm. means through the airport itself. Yeah, good. Okay, yeah. then uh, see you in a few minutes. Fine, see you at yeah. the passport yeah. check mm -hmm. there. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Excellent, thank you. Mm -hmm.
um, I'm going to perform external walk around of the aircraft. Uh, we usually start at the front passenger door and I'm going to move uh, clockwise around the aircraft to check that there is no damage to the aircraft which left unnoticed to us. So we start with the nose of the aircraft. You can see a lot of sensors here. They're all very important for us. And um, we check that there are no um, obstructions in them. And um, so you can see, for example, two pitot tubes, which are in this aircraft are named in a fancy way, air data system probes, uh, ice detector probe, alpha vane, and total air temperature probe. Um, the right side of the nose looks pretty much the same. The aircraft is symmetrical and um, so we have the same probes on the right side. For example, the pitot tubes, we have four of them in total for left pilot, for right pilot, for standby instruments, and the fourth one for redundancy. We check, we check all the gear. Um, so we check the general condition, the tires, the wheels, uh, the struts. There are no leakages of any kind. Uh, the lights, obviously. You can see also a small uh, red light over here. Um, it's um, another visual indication for a tow truck driver that the parking brake is set in the cockpit and the aircraft should not be moved. And uh, when we release the parking brake, you will also see um, that we are ready. the engines of course this is a um, pretty interesting engine um, of its kind on this aircraft uh, the huge fan which we see uh, is not directly connected with the um, um, engine shaft it's a geared turbofan engine which means uh, the fan is connected uh, by a gearbox to the engine and it rotates at uh, one third of the speed of the shaft which gives the every component of the engine to rotate at its optimum speed and uh, makes the engine lighter and more efficient. I checked the general condition of the wing, so the leading edge we see there are the slats and the trailing edge, the ailerons and the flaps. Um, those are those little surfaces which are moving after the takeoff and before landing. And um, passengers are sometimes wondering, what is it? Why they're moving? Um, is it okay? Yes, it's okay. They're giving us um, extra lift uh, at the lower speeds when we need it the most, takeoff and landing. You can see a little door, which is not a little hatch, which is not uh, even with the fuselage of, over there. So that's an APU air intake door. So and it's also a little bit noisy here. We're currently refueling, and we can see that the APU is uh, currently um, supplying us with air. We will initialize the system now, so that the uh, the aircraft understands who it actually is. For now, it knows that it has been on a previous flight. It knows that it works for a Baltic 
There's actually the data for the, our flight 661 to Dublin. I'll put the ADC call sign in there, which is BTI 6 Alpha 1. There it is. We do have a message down here. We'll have a look. It's a preliminary load sheet. And um, we'll use the printer for this to, uh, to have the data available when Marina comes back in. It's particularly important uh, to have a fresh airflow, especially at those COVID and post-COVID times nowadays, when um, before the first passenger enters the aircraft and uh, only after the last passenger disembarks the aircraft, all this time the APU is running to provide a fresh airflow for the passengers. The aircraft is pretty symmetrical, so I'll um, check the same things which I checked on the right side of the fuselage. On the left, I'll quickly finish my walk around and uh, see you on the flight deck. So I finished my walk around and I'm going to join Gerhard uh, with preparations on the flight deck. See you. So we're here, Marina is uh, back from her walk around and we are uh, now preparing the flight deck. Um, we've already received some ACAS data, the load sheet is in the system itself and uh, we've uh, done our performance checks. Uh, we, we calculate them separately and then compare the data, see what the FMS tells us um, if that is uh, basically the same and uh, we've entered at that so far. Now we're just waiting for the passengers. Yep. Cool. We can continue with the pre-flight checklist. Pre-flight checklist. Airplane documents. Onboard check. Emergency equipment. Check. Gear pins. Onboard. Overhead panel. Is uh, check. Checked the glare shield. It's, uh, checked. It's displays. Checked. The ice detector tests. Complete. Circuit breakers. Checked. The ICAS and info. So TCAS is to off. The doors. Window related. And no info. That's checked. Checked. Altimeters. Not zero point four reading twenty. Center panel. The pedestal. Check. Rudder trim. Uh, yeah, I've checked that before. Check. Yes, so it's done. Side sticks. Checklist. Checked on the right. Oxygen mask. Check. Checked on the right. And the flight deck door okay. is tested. Yes. So the pre flight checklist is complete. Want to quickly say hello to the passengers? Definitely. Uh, good morning, ladies and uh, gentlemen. Uh, this is your captain speaking. Uh, now we are fully ready for departure. In a few minutes we can close the doors and uh, proceed to the active runway. Anyway, the flight time to Dublin today is expected to be around uh, 2 hours and uh, 40 minutes and we do our best to reach destination as soon as possible. Later during approach in uh, Dublin I come back to you with latest wind information updated travel time. At the moment I wish you a pleasant flight. Thank you. 67 passengers, 2 hours 40 minutes. Enjoy the flight with the papers. Thank you. Okay, can you hear me? Yep. Excellent, that's good. So, I tow truck is here. Mm -hmm. You could. I can offer you the uh, before-star checklist. 
Um, okay, let's do it. So the check of prefab. Complete. APU and door external power. APU is on. The beacon. Uh, goes on after the clearance. Park brake. On. The stairs are being removed. On the Baltic um, 6, Alpha 1, start 302, start approach please. Robotic 6, Alpha 1, start push approved. Start approach approved, 6, Alpha 1. That is before start checklist complete. Start and push approved. Okay. Ground, hello. Hello, pre departure check is complete, all doors and hatches visually closed and secure. Tow bar and talker connected, waiting for your clearance. Perfect, we are ready. Can I release the parking brake? Release parking brake. Parking brake is released to me, start push. We've got even 81. So from Echo, we've got uh, we can compare that 81. You've got the same there. Yeah. Flap to um, speeds 383841 with an accelerate stop distance of 2399. Uh, exactly the same. Yeah, if you we can could change do it. that as well. Yeah. We'll change that. Ground flat. Yeah, go. Engines are clear to start. Okay, we're starting number one. Engine number one clear. Start left engine. Left engine on. Two zero zero degrees, two knots, and three six. Clear to take off on 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 three six. Parking brake is set. Number one engine stabilized. We're starting number two. Start right in. Start right engine. Right engine on. Uh, hydraulic three low pressure related. Check. The caution is cancelled. Also get the auto. Ground. We have two good uh, engine starts. You may disconnect yourself and thank you for your help. Disconnecting all fair signal left hand side. Have a nice flight. Bye bye. Thanks. Goodbye. Cool. What would you like to do? Before taxi checklist. Before taxi checklist. Hydraulic 3A. Auto. The uh, 3B. Auto. 2B. 
APU-i. Auto? APU. One second. To clear signal or shift. APU is to go. Yeah. Next one is flap. Uh, two selected. Anti-ice cow. Auto. Anti-ice wing. Auto. Flight controls. Coming up. That's related to the performance and the running APU. Check. I took the runner. Flight controls checked. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, Captain Marina Fadeitseva and the entire crew welcome you on board this air Baltic flight to Dublin. Our flight time is estimated to be 2 hours and 40 minutes. Zaiga, Jelena and Ivars will take care of your safety and comfort during our flight. We care about your health and safety. In order to limit the spread of the virus, please wear your facial mask for the whole duration of the flight, except when instructed by the crew in case of necessity to use oxygen masks. We recommend using the disinfection wipe provided to clean your hands and surfaces around you. Please find it in the basic care kit. That was good news, the APU. Off. And uh, no steer. Select on. FLS. I'll set it up in a minute. Okay. Actually, I can do that now. Where we still have to change it in the second So, runway 180, yeah, to go, otherwise yeah. it's it. And the trends? 5.01 to green. I can send it for So, I selected back for high already, and the rest is standard. Check. Perfect, thank you. That is before taxi check is complete. Let's see what he offers us. Mm hmm. Ground of Baltic 6 Alpha 1 taxi, please. 6 Alpha 1, start taxi. We'll hold short of Fox, uh, Baltic 6 Alpha 1. So right side is full. Left is free and taxi light on. Excellent, taxi light is now. Wake released. Uh, 6 Alpha 1, continue to holding points on way 18 by Fox to 3 clear the Valid 5 Echo. Valid 5 Echo and uh, Fox, and we're ready from Echo at Baltic 6 Alpha 1. Should end taxi take off. Thank you. Echo of the Baltic 6. Okay. So Fox okay. to the right and yep. then Echo. We also recommend practicing proper sneezing and coughing etiquette. Cover your mouth with a tissue or sneeze and cough into your inner elbow. Please try to keep safe distance from each other during the flight. Please always pay attention on signs in aircraft and crew who is there to make your flight safe and comfortable. And um, we have a reclearance via the Valet 5 Echo departure. I'll set that up for you briefly in a minute there. That's related to the uh, to the change. And yeah, check. That we have lost our speeds, which we will reconnect. In the event of evocation, leave all personal belongings on board. And now, may we have your attention for safety video demonstration. Thank you, and we wish you a pleasant flight. We have a takeoff too here if you can change it. Thanks very much. That is a very good one. Yes. Takeoff two we have. There's no flex, the conditions are the same. Flap two, that's related to the performance. Yeah. Engine has a bleed source, the trim is the same. Speeds are set and posted now, that's all complete. Perfect. And then 81 is N1 and that's checked. Excellent. We can quickly pick up our 
we clear the line up, we can wait on that runway and then uh, we can remove the departure if you like. Mm -hmm. um, I think I'll stop here for a second and uh, you can tell the ATC that we're going to land. Mm -hmm. Riga Air Baltic um, 6 Alpha 1, we're holding very shortly. Alpha Echo will be ready in, uh, in a minute. Uh, Jay, you're holding short for a while. Okay, so runway 18 performance is cross-checked uh, with us and uh, for 18 valid 5 echo in the box. Uh, climb 4000 initially, still there, and uh, uh, straight ahead 3.3 .3 above 2000, right turn to valid, that's in FMS. Uh, communication the same, MSA the same. Uh, engine out procedure, straight ahead 4000. Yeah, that's correct. If you're ready? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You're ready? Yeah. Baltic 6 Alpha 1, fully ready. Wind 170 degrees, 2 knots, and I'm an A-Cliff takeoff. Cliff takeoff, 1-8, Baltic 6, Alpha 1, you're ready. Entering 1-8, left is free. The right side is free, approach sector is clear. Lights and belts. Lights and belts, clear for takeoff. And if you can put the uh, heading back to runway 1-8. There we are, runway Thank heading you. 178. So we have the clearance. I'm going to continue rolling then. Auto throttle armed. Check. You ready? I am fully ready. Heading out. It's checked. Regal of eight, I will take six, Alpha one, out of one thousand, five, five. Public Baltic six, Alpha one, Ringer at the contact, class is low, two eight zero. Climbing two eight zero, Baltic six, Alpha one. Two eight zero, set. Two eight zero is checked. V flight level change. Checked. And climb sequence. Climb sequence. Flap one selected. Check. Standard is set and cross checks. So we can look at the after type of checklist we have to do the wing anti-ice test. Okay. Okay. 
we'll initiate it in just a moment. Are you warm enough? Temperature good for you? Um, I'm okay. Good. It's 10,000. Light and uh, gets pretty smoother now. Belt also then. Fine. Lights are off. Belts are auto. I'll initiate the, uh, the ring test. test. Maximum is 370 at ISA plus 10, and if it gets to ISA or below 380 is uh, fine. Yeah. So should have a look monitor the temperature a little bit. It's already plus nine, so the tendency is to decrease. Three five one Alpha one, take six Alpha one, result. So we log on. Yep. We logged on to Riga. Perfect. Riga Labrita, Baltic 6, Alpha 1, climbing flight level 280 and now valid. Starbucks 6, Alpha 1, Riga approach, correction, Riga control radar, found the climb level 380. Climbing 380, so Baltic 6, Alpha 1. 380 set. 36, correction, 380 is checked. And once again, so I accept. Yeah. Perfect. There's some kind of noise there. Yeah? yeah, it's on VHF2. Mm -hmm. It's on the guard frequency. Okay. currently cruising at 38,000 feet and um, we are well established in the cruise here um, as you can see on the map we've just um, we've just passed uh, the uh, the uh, the coastline of Denmark and we are further down um, on our way then uh, into um, the UK which we will be crossing and uh, before we then uh, reach Ireland um, that is basically our entire distance which we um, still um, have to go 
um, and um, it's roughly 520 nautical miles, um, which is then something uh, like 900 something uh, kilometers, which we have ahead of us. And um, the cruise is very stable, smooth conditions today. Um, we've got a blue sky ahead, a couple of clouds outside, as you might be able to see. Um, but nothing really what affects us, uh, which affects us in, uh, in any way. And with that, um, the flight is just going excellent. Marina is the pilot flying on this leg, and um, she's uh, on the captain. I am assisting her as good as I can. I might You're not always well. uh, be <laughs> catching everything, but that is why it is two of us here in the flight deck. Marina has come not too long ago, but long enough um, from the Q400, and you have met Marina on one of the Airclips uh, videos on, as a captain on the Q400. So how do you like the aircraft? Of course, it's an uh, amazing aircraft. I think um, there just truly cannot be a different answer to that, because there is no reason not to love that aircraft. Um, so in comparison to Q400, um, of course, um, a silly short answer would be it doesn't have propellers. But besides that, of course, we fly higher, um, we fly further out um, on different speeds. So, of course, uh, the network of destination of destinations is uh, much wider. So I've been to the places I uh, had been on Q400. And um, I've been flying this aircraft for uh, um, almost a year now. Yeah, I, I think more or less a year um, on the left seat um, on Airbus uh, 220. Um, I'm yeah, fully enjoying it. Uh, what did you find most difficult when you changed from the dash to this aircraft? Um, actually, it's a difficult question to answer because um, I, I'm not the only one who would say that transition to uh, this type is very easy going. Um, the aircraft is... Um, full of um, automatic systems which help pilot a lot so uh, of course the pilot work I, I wouldn't say it became easier um, but there are more systems we need to know on that aircraft more thoroughly more deeper but um, um, the, the type rating course is uh, uh, done in such a uh, easy way that um, I cannot even recall like specifically the, the difficult, uh, yeah, the, the biggest difficulty of that aircraft. Um, so, on this aircraft, um, there are no so-called memory items. So there is nothing uh, uh, to do from the memory in case of emergencies. Uh, besides um, the oxygen masks, which are uh, for us uh, to put in case of any uh, fire uh, involved malfunction or uh, um, decompression. Besides that, the aircraft really nicely helps us in practically every of uh, malfunctions and tell us what to do. So I, I think that was a transition from um, a more difficult uh, aircraft uh, to the easier in a flying-wise and maybe more complicated system-wise aircraft. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have any um, anything for yourself to specify? Because, as, as I said, I cannot really come up with anything which is so difficult on that aircraft. No, that's the same with me. I have been flying um, the Q400 as well yeah. before. And um, how to say, of course, it's a, it's a change. First of all, the Q400, of course, has a full glass cockpit. With that, the presentation of data, a map, and so on, is similar. Resolution is by far not as good as here. Um, but otherwise, um, presentation of data in general is, of course, um, in a, in a certain way similar, screens are smaller, so um, uh, that is of course um, a, a big advantage that we've got these huge screens um, where the information is displayed on, we've got these excellent maps um, available. Um, that it doesn't only help situational awareness, it's just a pleasure to look at and really fun to, to work with it. Um, as you mentioned already, the um, uh, the, the lack of memory items, so items which we have to do by memory and um, if something goes wrong um, and an older type of aircraft you would have to um, do certain things then um, by memory um, a lot of uh, different flows, switching, settings, turn of knobs, uh, activation of systems and so forth that is not the case here. Um, people might make mistakes, it's in the human nature to make mistakes, um, and 
with that, of course, um, uh, the outcome might be um, even worse. And that is made a lot more easy here. You've got an electronic checklist system, um, which you pull up, um, the, the uh, malfunction gets displayed, um, we work off the, the, um, uh, the electronic checklist and it tells us um, what we have to do. There's a lot of how to say, knowledge, which you have to have, of course, behind it um, when it comes to systems and how systems correlate. Um, but on the other hand, um, um, a checklist system like that helps very much to, to deal with a certain situation. So yeah. I, I love that presentation mm -hmm. and the fact that we've got that support, actually. Yeah, and definitely. of course, the, the more modern um, uh, machinery gets, um, uh, the, the, the less of, um, how to say, the risk of errors should be actually there. Yep. Um, the passenger in the back wants us uh, to deal with that in the, in the, in the best possible way. Mm -hmm. Talking about presentation of um, uh, information to us, I think a very nice um, uh, piece of display is the ICAS. So it's the right side of my uh, display number two, which basically uh, tells us visually if we have uh, um, any non-normal or special selection of any switch or button in the aircraft. Uh, so it tells us uh, also, including um, any malfunctions on the aircraft, it instantly appears there and basically with the one quick scan of the ACAS we can uh, see in which positions, in which status is our aircraft. At the moment uh, there are three nodes there, wing anti is off, that's a requirement for our aircraft uh, above flight level 350, backflow high, um, that's uh, related to the uh, fresh increased flow of air for the passengers during those times, and uh, no pad, that's a standard item there. Uh, the pack, fo uh, pack flow high is of course something which we have introduced now um, with this uh, aftermath, or it's actually not even the aftermath, we're still dealing with uh, Corona. Um, basically just within the last days um, the borders um, of many countries have opened up again and uh, we find ourselves in the situation that we have increased flights now after having been on ground for a long time. Um, so within a period of nearly three months we've only done um, a few flights which were mainly repatriation flights, picking up stuck passengers um, who were on a, um, yeah, on, an, on, a, on a trip somewhere else. It might have been vacation, might have been business or family visits or whatever, and um, to bring these people home again. That has been our main task and we've only done a few of those. Um, so um, now that normal line operation starts up again with, um, of course, significantly reduced passenger numbers for now. Um, we've put measures in place. We've been working heavily on these things um, for in this period of uh, three months to see the optimum uh, um, introduced uh, to ensure that passengers are comfortable flying again. Um, a lot of different um, issues have been um, addressed, um, discussed, taken care of, implemented as procedures. Um, we as an airline, we want to be on the forefront of um, 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 of the industry movement um, to um, ensure that passengers really feel safe traveling uh, with us and that there's no point of discussion in any point in at any time um, when it comes to um, uh, how to say being protected as much as they can um, that we hand out a, um, a small little care um, uh, package which contains a mask we do require that uh, passengers wear their mask for the entire flight um, it's basically there to protect the others as well, um, as much as we can. Um, and then vice versa, of course, the passenger, um, this, this specific passenger, him or herself. Um, then uh, before the boarding, we do measure temperatures. Um, that's an automated procedure. Um, we've invested in uh, pretty expensive cameras who produce um, a, an, an image checking the, uh, the, the, the temperature. Not all is um, really um, scientifically proven that that would be um, a measure there. Of course, um, I would say apparently even people who do not have the symptoms and still um, carry the, uh, the virus. Um, but um, we want to do the most we can to ensure that um, we have at least, um, uh, I would say, taken into account all of these measures. And I think in uh, general, um, people are usually very concerned about concerned uh, during this period about flying. That they are sitting so close together, and the aircraft is a closed space, let's say, in, in a cabin. Um, but uh, actually, the airflow in the aircraft is done in such a efficient manner, uh, vertically, uh, from um, 
up to down um, in a way that it's not really um, mixed up with the air of the person who is sitting even on your side. Absolutely. Um, I also talked about um, APU uh, quickly uh, during my external walk around that yeah. uh, as a procedure we have it a mandatory um, uh, to switch it on before the first passenger uh, enters the aircraft and uh, switch it off only after the last one leaves the aircraft uh, to keep this constant flow of air being refreshed in the cabin. Absolutely. So before you would have switched the APU on either if you need electrical power, which we don't need at that yeah. stage because we still have ground power connected. So um, uh, from the from the service unit on ground, um, so we don't need electrical support. But we have made it a rule that even um, five to ten minutes before the passengers actually start the boarding, we have the APU up and running to have that high airflow through the cabin. So um, to ensure that at a constant base the air is exchanged. Um, in the cabin and um, now uh, we have these HEPA filters on board um, which are um, filters um, basically taking anything out of the air which you could find in there and um, they would take 90 or above 99 percent of anything which you would have like um, germs and, and things like that um, they would filter them out the air itself with these HEPA filters and us working um, how to say our air conditioning system in a, in a more intense way um, the air gets exchanged in the entire cabin every two to three minutes and with that um, it is pretty secure that um, how to say the way the air flows and so on it is not unpleasant for the passengers so you would not feel a big draft but on the other hand there's uh, there's significantly um, um, airflow um, to ensure that um, nothing can really spread which you would have in your direct environment and um, <coughs> As where you would think about uh, fuel savings before, and you would of course think about the environment as well, um, run, not running the APU until you would just basically want to start up the aircraft where you really need the APU. Um, now this has become absolutely secondary because primary um, focus is of course on uh, the passengers' um, health and safety and that they feel um, in some way as well taken care of. And with that, um, of course, we, we use it to distribute the air into the cabin. Ladies and gentlemen, we will be starting our service shortly. In business class, we will be serving a meal from our chef. In economy class, a variety of meals and selection of drinks is available for purchase. If you pre-order the meal before the flight, it will be arriving very soon. You will find the food and drinks offers in menu cards, which will be distributed in a few minutes. Please be informed that only credit card payments will be accepted for purchases. That's all from us at the moment. Please sit back and enjoy your hospitality. Thank you. Of course, I have to say, us as an airline, we have been hit hard. Um, us as an airline, the, the, the whole industry, all of the airlines, we were all on ground, um, very few were flying. Um, most of them have, uh, how to say, had to put their, their operations onto ground. Um, many airline staff and, and other industries, of course, are affected as well. But um, when, if we talk about flying and the airlines, then, of course, many staff um, have lost their jobs. Um, unfortunately, this has happened to us as well. We had to um, uh, decrease fleet sizes um, and, um, and we had to release people um, in this time, which was really a very, very tough um, uh, thing to do. And it's been, of course, specifically tough for those people who have been affected. We have roughly um, put our pilot core um, to, um, to, to the half, half of the strength we had before. Um, and um, it, was a, it was a very, very tough process. I think that we've managed it in a decent way, um, respecting many, many different um, aspects, um, going from seniority over to um, social aspects um, before we had basically established um, who um, would be staying, keeping their job, and who actually had to go. Um, we had to change a couple of uh, positions. There were people who had already achieved their captaincy with, uh, within the company and who unfortunately had to um, then take a, uh, the first officer position. But from what I've heard up to now, um, all those people are specifically happy that they still kept a job and uh, did not have to leave. And of course now we're very much focusing on ramping up the, uh, the business again and our flights. Um, to see that uh, those colleagues whom we had to release, um, where we've put a guarantee on re-employment out, um, and we will re-employ these people in the sequence of the way we had to release them. 
Yeah. So um, but um, they basically can come back as soon as we, uh, we um, I would say, ramp up our operations. They are definitely looking forward to that. Yeah. Yeah, because I'm um, the one, the, the lucky one who stayed there in the company and of course I'm super happy about it. Um, of course that was a tough period and um, there was a certain extent of uncertainty in the beginning but I think the company managed that uh, in a very uh, good manner uh, so we indeed how, we, how it was already told we stopped practically all operations and um, I was not flying for around three months as majority of pilots I was uh, spending my um, so-called isolation period in, in other countries so I was not involved also with any uh, repatriation flights um, so I had basically time uh, for myself nevertheless, nevertheless um, it was all well so uh, communicated uh, from the company okay. including the unions um, so wh while I was at home I still had all the information what was happening in the company which steps are taking uh, our uh, CEO kept us informed on a weekly basis um, in the beginning it was even daily update of the information uh, what the cap uh, what the company did today what's the plan for tomorrow etc etc also the unions uh, uh, did a very well um, their job they stepped in and they supported us in every possible way but of course uh, um, that could not be avoided the process of uh, letting some people go but yeah hopefully that's a temporary uh, solution yeah, we very much hope so, and that will get. Uh, we've got very ambitious plans um, for the future uh, when it comes not only to the ramp up. Now we're adding flights every single week. The passenger figures are not still not what we really are hoping for. People are, of course, um, how to say, um, they're holding back with their with their travel uh, plans. Um, at the same time, there's um, still a certain uncertainty when it comes to other countries um, where you would need to go. Um, what are the measures there? What is the development of um, a virus spread or how are the figures actually really now contained and so forth. Um, so we hope that that will ramp up um, as well and uh, that we'll see figures growing. Um, for the next years, we've uh, got an ambitious plan to, um, to take a lot of deliveries. Um, and, um, and to increase the fleet significantly. Yeah. So uh, we're, we're actually really, really very, uh, very positive. And um, I imagine that yeah, this, um, the current, let's call it a transition period is very complicated um, as for the management, also a little bit for the pilots in a way that uh, our schedule changes according to the conditions outside. And sometimes we, um, neither um, our CEO knows if the flight which is planned for tomorrow going to be allowed to be performed or not uh, so of course in those conditions we are very uh, dynamic operations uh, uh, doing dynamic operations at the moment and we are ready um, to have uh, changes on our rosters and uh, yeah so we, we, we are uh, going with the flow as the situation develops sure very much, of course, are, are very important and, and we have a big focus on there that the flights which we offer on the market, um, that they really take place. Um, it's not always quite up to us. Um, we definitely want to ensure that we are not the ones cancelling any flights. Um, if we put out the, the um, how to say, the announcement that we are starting up a certain route, um, then the passenger should be relying on that. We are going to serve that route as well and that's what we really have a big, big focus on. Um, yeah, the plans are sometimes um, not always supported by um, certain events or states, um, at least in this, in this uh, initial startup period. We are getting uh, to much more reliable conditions now as uh, many countries are opening up their borders and, um, how to say, um, decreasing the, uh, the implemented measures. Um, and that seems to be wor working very well. We by far don't have the frequencies yet on, the, on these routes. Uh, which we used to have and, um, and of course we're by far not uh, up with the entire route network the way we have had it and the way we are planning to establish it um, in the forthcoming months now. But we'll see how that develops and we're very positive um, that that will work out for us quite well.
So how did you actually get into aviation? Okay, um, I think um, that would be not honest from my side. Uh, not to mention that my parents are working in aviation. Yeah. Um, so I guess there was some kind of an impact from there, uh, but uh, there was a never a direct push force or even I think a suggestion like, hey Marina, why wouldn't you like follow us? Yeah. Um, I don't remember that at least, but of course being raised up in that kind of environment, yeah. there might be some kind of uh, interest growing inside me. Because as much as I remember, of course, uh, that um, I made the choice uh, rationally, so when I was uh, about to finish school or a little bit before that, I was just choosing um, where to go, wh where to continue. So I took a list of all the universities we have in Estonia, my home country, and the uh, Estonian Aviation Academy was one of the choices. And I was thinking what I'm uh, good in, not so good in, um, and I thought I might give it a try. And um, I think I even remember how I went to my parents to tell that, uh, hey, I'm going to try to apply for a pilot position. And they were pretty surprised. So that's how I, I think I remember that it went in a way that um, yeah. my interest grew into that um, from myself. But of course, um, parents helped me in every possible way uh, with any information they, they had, etc. So yeah, that was pretty simple and straightforward. I went to our um, uh, flight academy in Estonia. I got there, um, I became a pilot. My first uh, job was in Estonia. I uh, flew there as a first officer uh, on a Saab 340 for one and a half years. And so relatively experienced, I came to Air Baltic on a Q400 right seat from where I transitioned to the left seat. And yeah. now I'm on an Airbus. Well, that's what we've seen already in other yeah. videos. And so on. The, the Eclipse fans have seen that. Yeah, that's uh, great. Yeah, mm -hmm. something like this now, um, we haven't really experienced in any way. We do remember that at some point, they saw this, this Corona time, if you want to call it like that. Um, we've seen, um, how to say, disruption of air travel with the, uh, with the volcano, um, which went up in Iceland uh, quite some years ago. And um, air travel um, uh, went, uh, how to say, came to a standstill actually for quite a while. It was, um, I think, some, some kind of 10, 12 days. I actually don't remember the length exactly. But something like this is absolutely unprecedented. Um, I think since, since the Second World War, something like this has not happened to the most. So, yeah, we're, we're just really hoping that uh, we we'll move forward and uh, it goes, goes well. Mm -hmm. Gerhard, um, if you want to maybe say a few words about your personal experience uh, uh, during this uh, Corona time, because as I said, uh, for me, as a uh, just a captain on the Airbus, I was mostly sitting at home and not very much involved with operation, um, although I heard everything what is happening, so maybe a little inside look. Okay, okay. So, um, yeah, good. Um, the specifically the management i don't count myself to the management but as the chief pilot of course um, how to say i've been involved in uh, in many issues um, and um, specifically putting the fleet on ground um, how to say then organizing some very special flights the repatriation flights um, we've done cargo flights uh, to china even um, to uh, to transport medical supply um, um, we've done things like that there has been a lot of work um, which we've done in that time. So um, the office has been pretty deserted. There were um, only a very few people who came in. Um, we had uh, severe measures in place to ensure that everybody, um, how to say, is, is separated from the other. Um, meetings took uh, place uh, nearly um, exclusively on, um, on, a, on a media platform. We haven't really met too much in, in person, and if so, then um, with, a, with a big distance. Um, some things you sometimes, um, how to say, just can ex exchange um, if you meet um, the other person in a, or in, a, in a specific room, where you have to have uh, other um, uh, tools available. Uh, but we've been working on, um, on different things then. Uh, first of all, how to continue? That was, of course, the top question. And. Um, so of course nobody really knew how it's going to continue. Um, there were predictions, there were, um, how to say, um, visions how um, how this would continue. 
Um, there was, of course, there were certain dependencies as well. States had closed their borders. They had, um, uh, how to say, ruled out any international uh, traffic, uh, be it by bus or by plane, um, what else you, you might have. Um, so with that, of course, there, there were a lot of things to, um, how to say, which, which kept us on ground and um, made us, how to say, uh, or, or restricted us um, to operate um, uh, flights with a special permission, which were, for example, these repatriation flights. Um, and then, of course, we, we uh, from the first moment, we wanted to prepare and be prepared um, for whatever might come. Different scenarios, and of course, the most positive one is that we just ramp up um, in a decent way, the way we are doing it now, um, ensuring everything that not only our passengers actually are um, on a, in a feel safe, are safe, are taken care of, but of course that our crew members as well are, um, how to say, um, are taken care of. We're sitting in an environment where social distancing, of course, is, um, how to say, fairly limited. The space between us is always the same, um, at least here on the flight deck now. Um, we can, um, how to say, um, enlarge it um, or increase the, the distance uh, when we walk somewhere, when we, um, how to say, meet in the briefing room, we could do that, and we have done that. You saw all those markings in the briefing room um, before, and. Um, so we, ha we have, and we, we have put measures in, in, uh, in place um, who, and which ensure um, that, uh, that, that we have this distancing and that we wash our hands and that we disinfect them, that we mirror the masks wherever they are required, necessary, and where they are useful. And um, yeah, we've, we've done tests amongst um, the, the people uh, coming in for work, and, um, which we had limited. So most of our office staff was sent home. Um, they, we had very quickly put measures into place um, to um, ensure that they are able to work from home. They uh, all got their electronic means um, and, um, and were able then to, to set that up and, and uh, come in for daily meetings on these media platforms. So that worked very, very well. Amazing how fast we were actually uh, um, able to adopt that in a, in a great way. And of course you learn um, how to say certain things uh, for the future. Um, is it really necessary to call office workers in and let them work on a daily basis mm -hmm. in the office? Or can we do actually more from home and um, just come in for some, some essential stuff on, on certain days? Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. I would just maybe add from my side, not even as an uh, employee for Baltic, but yeah. uh, general public, that I feel pretty lucky that we spent that period in uh, Baltic states. Yeah. Um, I spent it yes. in Estonia because the numbers of infections were uh, relatively low. And uh, I think True. definitely um, a, a good point uh, was that the density uh, of uh, people outside uh, is very yeah. low in our countries. So that helped to, to stop that or to uh, limit the spread of infection. And uh, people obeyed in all the countries the regulations and uh, that went pretty calm and uh, relaxed, I would say. Yeah, true. There were yeah. no harsh measures uh, implemented besides yeah. the social distancing. Uh, closing certain um, uh, certain events, of course, and uh, public yeah. places. Yeah. And Latvia, of course, was one of the first countries in Europe who closed totally the borders, yeah. and with that, did a very good job with uh, they um, really stop did. Yeah, the Absolutely. infection to spread. Yeah. I really must say, we, we have been very, very lucky mm -hmm. in, in our countries. Um, the spread has been, been uh, on a very low base, and um, yeah, that, that has helped very much. Um, yeah, and as I mentioned, um, a lot of work from home, of course, um, people get their IT solutions, they get their computers, their laptops, and um, are able then to work from home. Um, maybe we should uh, let the Eclipse fans uh, know as well that we do not intend to work from home in the future, neither you nor me. So we will not be sitting uh, just with uh, the side stick at home, at the not laptop. Not in the near future. And, uh, not <laughs> in the near future. Although this is all fly-by-wire, and there's no plans to put it on a computer yet mm. and, uh, how to say, operate from ground while the passengers are flying here. So that's pretty good that we can enjoy this on a daily basis. Yeah. But um, it's good to see that that um, all works out um, uh, very well. Even the measures we have put in place for our employees and, um, and for the passengers, of course. And those are basically the things which we have been working on intensely um, during, during uh, those uh, months where we have been mainly on ground. Um, of course, sadly, it um, had to do, of course, as well with um, 
with releasing people, um, where we have met all of them when they came in um, to say goodbye. Um, and um, we put a big emphasis on um, that we are doing our very best to, to make this airline grow again, um, to be able to re-employ these people or to at least offer re-employment if they want to come back. Um, they have been released because of this crisis situation and not because we uh, were not happy with their work. And I think that's um, a very important thing to mention as well. Yeah, well, those are our colleagues and um, I think they fully understand it and uh, they're already looking forward to uh, come back to the company. Yeah, absolutely. Because yeah. even with the three months being on the ground, I really, really miss that. Miss those views, miss that job, miss those little chats in the fly deck. Yeah, true, mm -hmm. absolutely, yeah. yeah. It is something good to have that back, yes. It has become very quiet at the airport as well. Um, you always have the feeling there's something wrong. Although we're very happy if um, we, um, how to say, are able to produce less noise um, for the neighborhood of the airport. Um, it's always a very sensitive thing. Um, we've already done that by introducing this aircraft, which has a significantly lower uh, noise footprint um, than any other model, which um, you would find um, approaching our airport or departing. Um, so, as this is the most modern single aisle um, passenger plane um, on the market, it has a significantly lower uh, noise footprint um, as well. And, uh, that does make a different difference, but I still miss some kind of noise at the airport. Well, every day it will get more and more yeah, noisy. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Yeah. Hello, my name is uh, Ivars. I'm uh, Cabin crew team leader, uh, supervisor in company, and I have been working for uh, five years. Uh, today we have a flight to Dublin, which takes uh, two hours and 40 minutes to get there, and the same time on the way back. Uh, today uh, we are on a very special aircraft with a Latvian national flag livery, which is uh, also you can see it here on my little pin. Uh, this was made for. Uh, Latvia's 100th birthday. We also have uh, two aircraft with a Lithuanian and a Estonian flag as well. So people usual, usually are uh, quite excited uh, to board uh, those special livery aircraft. This pandemic uh, came. Uh, we knew about it, of course, and uh, it was expected, but uh, I guess nobody thought that it would uh, bring such a lockdown uh, throughout the whole uh, world, around the globe. And uh, we were actually the first company that stopped uh, our flights. We were the first ones. And uh, now we are slowly resuming them. I think that uh, most of uh, our colleagues, I would say all of them, like uh, no matter they are working in the office, they are technicians, cabin crew or pilots, they are really, really happy to get uh, back to work, uh, to fly again. And uh, everybody is really coming uh, to work with a smile on their face and uh, with a pride in their heart. On board, uh, we do have uh, the service, uh, which is buying board service concept. That uh, ev everything is uh, for purchase. Nothing is included uh, in the price. However, there is uh, an opportunity to pre-order meals that you can find on our website. And um, you would get uh, served first with a nice hot meal with a starter and a dessert. Uh, for all four customers, we provide uh, really good uh, prices of tickets. And uh, if you, you can get the f full service uh, specter, so from uh, economy to business class. And then if you want to add bags or uh, meals, it is uh, optional. And it's a very nice and a good quality product that we offer. We are reaching the coastline um, of the UK mm -hmm. and um, I think maybe it's just time to move forward um, exactly. to get some, uh, some weather, some mm -hmm. fresh weather and um, to prepare ourselves for the approach. So yeah. I can, uh, if you like, I can uh, use the, the ACAS to get us some weather. So runway uh, 28 in Dublin, runway is wet, so obviously it was raining. There are several closed uh, taxiways. Yes, which um, we saw in the Northerns already. Yeah. They are refurbishing the airport there in Dublin. Yep. I'll get back to that a little bit later. I'll just take the 
weather 3208 knots it's raining still at the moment there are yeah. some clouds 12 degrees mm -hmm. and we expect uh, 53.5 tons for landing yeah. I think we have um, uh, we're planned for Buxo 1x ray arrival. Yep, which I have here. Mm -hmm. That should be plates 10 2 Delta. The same. So then I just continue with the briefing flow. Yeah? Yeah. So mainly runway 1634 is closed. Yeah, exactly. Uh, for takeoffs and landings at least. And um, yeah, as you mentioned, uh, all those small intersections which are close to that runway are closed. So the northern barn is closed. Uh, Mike 1, Hotel 1, Whiskey 1, Whiskey 2. It also mentions it's closed Sierra 2 and Alpha. So um, if we land runway uh, 28, then um, we can use a high speed uh, exit Sierra 5 for Sierra 6 and via Sierra. Uh, I think we go all the way um, to the runway, we cross that runway. And if Alpha 1 is indeed closed, then we use Bravo 2. Yeah? Yeah. And from there on, I think we can use the Foxtrot all that the way to the north. Yeah? Yeah, that's most likely mm -hmm. what we will get. And then uh, we come in probably by a Link 4, a Link 5, somewhere up there to mm -hmm. Okay, good. Mm -hmm. Cool. And we'll see how that goes. Mm -hmm. And uh, for the rest, if you're ready to follow me. Sure, at any time. Okay, so um, I start with the routing. Mm. We're planned for a Boxo 1 X-ray arrival. That's uh, set in FMS. Find that point. Yeah, so it starts from here. Uh, Boxo, we have maximum uh, uh, speed 250, we have to be below flight level 100, that is a restriction over there. Otsis, then Keraf, max speed 230 at flight level 80. And then we go uh, Kogax, uh, the same restrictions apply. And uh, Narmo, Lapmo, max 180 above 3000. Um, so the general speed restriction uh, 250 below uh, flight level 100. We come from the side with the MSA 2400 and there is a little uh, southern uh, uh, part of MSA 4000. Yes. So from there on uh, we go to ILS. Uh, 2.8 runway is in use, as we mentioned that's a wet runway. So uh, I will check the arrival data. The frequency for ILS uh, 31135. Final track is 278, 279 uh, on the chart, so uh, one okay. degree uh, difference. In the, in the one degree, yes. Yeah. Uh, we have a uh, runway threshold elevation of uh, 202. Mm -hmm. And uh, we started LAPMO intermediate fix at 3000. We might descend 2500 uh, for MOXIF. From there on, uh, with three degrees glide slope, we go down to minimums uh, 410 that's selected in Barrow. In case of go around, we climb uh, straight ahead to point uh, Gannet, max 3000 feet. Let me check it here. So Gannet 3000 feet or below. Uh, then turn right with the maximum speed 220 to join the radial 278 inbound uh, Dublin VOR and climbing 5000 feet. So that's in FMS. We can use uh, LNAV for go around. Um, so that's as much as I can say uh, from the chart and uh, we check our performance so um, you also calculated that yes sure with the runway uh, coefficient code uh, uh, 5 the weather is asserted auto brakes uh, medium okay. uh, flaps uh, 4 for landing our spread action uh, stays in auto and I'll use the auto throttle uh, for landing and I get this uh, VRF speed of 134 and the go around 140 and 150, the speeds are be selected. That's exactly what I have as well. Okay. Got an operational landing distance of 1555. The same? Cool. Yeah. For the descent, uh, we descend with the same uh, MAX 78. Transition flight level is uh, 60. Stabilization gate is uh, 1000 standard. Um, the elevation is 200, so we might use it according to pressure altimeters. Sure. So after landing, as we discussed, 
we're going to vacate to the right, Sierra 5 or um, Sierra 6, then Sierra, and as briefed before, with all the restrictions according to the Notons. Yeah. Yeah? Yes. So, yeah. Um, aircraft still good. Um, no specials that I can remember. No, and there's no special procedure like uh, on some airports where we would have to report that we do not have any uh, suspicious health case on board or something like that. So we do not. Um, no, so there's nothing additional for us to do. Yeah, for us, um, yeah, we also have an alternate. It's Shannon. Yeah. For there, we need a thousand nine hundred to go, and we have a tankering on the way back, and it shows that we have fuel on the way back. Also, we have. Uh, Pretty high amount of fuel. Yes. So, yep. Mm -hmm. Cool. So, Very if good. you have nothing to add, then from my side, briefing is completed. Excellent. Mm -hmm. No, no we can to add. we can initiate the descent or checklist. Descent and approach checklist. Um, so the anti ice wing, I'll skip. When ready, we will descend three three zero forty five six up. 330 set when ready. Excellent. 330 is checked. When the FMS? Set. Minimum. Uh, 410 set. Uh, the order break. Medium. ACAS. Is uh, checked with the backflow high, wing, and outbreak medium. Excellent. And the punch brief. Completed. One open item of the uh, wing anti ice, which we will mm -hmm. do. Yeah, I think I'll start descending around 10 miles from now. Cool. And um, we send already information uh, for the ground handling. Okay. Yeah, that's also one of the measures nicely implemented by the company to uh, decrease amount of interaction uh, with the people on the ground. So we have a system, the data link system on the aircraft, with which we already notify in advance uh, the ground handling at the destination if we need anything and. Uh, so for today's flight, uh, for example, no fueling needed, and they know that no fueling required, and I expect them not to come to the aircraft. Yeah, clear. You're absolutely right. Where in earlier times, of course, you would even appreciate that contact with the local staff. They would come on board, they would come into the flight deck, they would talk to us, um, we would have a little chat, a short exchange, at least of uh, essential information and so on, and all of that now goes via data link. It is the right way to do it, no doubt, um, how to say, um, to limit any possible spread. It is very, very important that we don't take anything home, bring it into our crew center, and then, um, how to say, a week later, um, we have several flights which would not be able to operate anymore um, because we possibly have to stay at home or are sick or whatever it might be. So in that concern, very, very important measures, and, um, and it's, uh, Unfortunate, but uh, we really have to stick to it. Yes. So I think I start my descent. Excellent, good. With, uh, vertical speed. Perfect, and I will report. London of Baltic Six Alpha One is leaving for three three zero. So B vertical speed two thousand. Checked. Air Baltic Six Alpha One descend flight level two nine zero. Sending flight level 290, so we're about to 6 on 4. 290 set. 290 check. Airbotic 6 Alpha 1, route direct to Baxo. Uh, uh, direct to Baxo, Airbotic 6 Alpha 1, thank you. Box, uh, this one? Yes. Confirm. Oh, wait, so. Yeah, yeah. No. And that is confirmed. Execute. So that is executed. Nice. Airport 66 Alpha 1, contact Scottish 128.055. Goodbye. 128.055, about 6 Alpha 1. Bob. Scottish, good morning. Avaltic 6 Alpha 1, descending flood or 290 in Mount Baxo. Avaltic 6 Alpha 1, descending flood or 290 in Mount Baxo. Avaltic 
Use the spoilers a little bit to slow down in the turbulence and keep the vertical right. Sure. Select lap one. Lap one selected. And we're clear for approach, so we are. approach from us one localizer, one glide slot armed. Checked. Selected. Decreased, decreased the vertical speed to capture the glide. That was to go 1014. Let's check with 1014. Approach lock 1. Checked. Heading 279. Slope. Sure. And uh, 5,000 for go round as a final uh, go round altitude. Perfect. Oh, 
I think I see a slight rainbow on the left. Yeah, I saw that as well on the approach. Yeah. The Baltic 6 Alpha 1 fully established at 10 miles. Baltic 6 Alpha 1, tower 18, take the plane. 80 cents, bro. 80 cents. Dublin Tower, good morning. The Baltic 6 Alpha 1, fully established. ILS 2818 and Air Baltic 6 Alpha 1, good morning. Surface wind 330 degrees, 7 knots. Help me to 8, clear to land. Clear to land, 28, the Baltic 6 Alpha 1. We are clear to land. That checked. I can select gear down. Gear down. Flap 3. Alpha 1, Vicky, Sierra 5, right turn on Sierra. Sierra 5 and Sierra, Baltic 6, Alpha. Sierra 5 and Sierra, copy it.
the right side is free. The left is free. Airball 66 Alpha 1. You may potentially give way to vacating ACR traffic at Sierra 4. Contact ground now 121 death flight. Bye bye. We will give way to the uh, vacating ADR and uh, we have contact ground now 121 to 6 Alpha 1. Okay, giving way to ATR. Exactly, so that is still about to land. Mm -hmm. And we can him on do the radio, can't see him yet. Yeah. We can do meanwhile the after landing. Sure. Procedure. I'll start the APU. Go ahead. Ground, good morning, Baltic 6 Alpha 1. We are on Sierra. We will give way to a landing and vacating ATR. Yeah. Apple 6, 6, Alpha 1, it should be fine now, you can continue Whiskey 2, Whiskey 3. Okay, fine, uh, we'll continue on Sierra, Whiskey 2, Whiskey 3, Apple 6, 6, Alpha 1. It's just through the clouds now, so yeah, yeah. it's a little bit too enthusiastic. So Whiskey 2 is partially open, obviously, until Whiskey 3, where we turn left and yes. there we cross the uh, runway. Just too slow. Left is still free. And we are crossing runway 16. Left Afo, is free. We are approved to cross. The runway itself is closed, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe. We'll sure, we are. We just realized that. Thank you. chart with the parking lots yeah, yeah. <laughs> instant karma exactly mm -hmm. yes so like link four, four left yeah. is three cool. and apron sure. four and uh, Romeo one one uh, um, three one one uh, three one one Romeo yeah. Continue to the right, yep. left is three. So right apron four, yeah. Mm -hmm. Basically, got the uh, the standard side. They can see it. It's where that uh, fuel truck. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Fuel truck, which we didn't request. Well, I might not. Be for <laughs> yeah. So I go left here, left is free. Sure. This one is three one two. Yeah. And I see the marshaller. So you can switch off the taxi light. Taxi light is off.
parking brake is on. And Check we can it. do the shutdown checklist. Shutdown checklist. No steer. Off. The APU or external power. APU is on. Left engine run. Three minutes are over. Off. Right engine run. Off. Seat belts. Off. A beacon. Off. My control test is not required. The hydraulic 3A. Off. 3B. Off. And, and off. 2B. And I switch the back flow to normal now. Yes. Put the APU. Check this is complete. Thank you.